on board. Um, I hereby call said meeting to order. With the town clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Dennis Troy. Present. Councilman Tom Desmond. Councilman Paul Valentine. Councilman Jerry Vitari. Here. Supervisor Chris Day. Here. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, we, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, one announcement today. It's our weekly announcement that we still continue to have the Pearl River Farmers Market open to the public every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. going through the 24th of November. Uh, it's gotten more vendors each week, uh, fresh produce, prepared foods, all sorts of stuff. It's a great thing. It's on the stretch of North William between Washington Avenue and Central Avenue from, again, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. Go to church, go to the farmer's market, get food in downtown. It's a great process. All right. Moving on, we have a presentation um, from Kim from my office will be presenting something. I think Eric is going to lead it, our Parks and Recreation Superintendent, for the Kyle Boyce Memorial Scholarship Committee. Go on. Sure. Uh, so my name is Eric Gordon. I'm the Park Superintendent for the Town of Orangetown. Each summer, the Town of Orangetown Parks and Recreation Department runs a full day camp for resident children. We do three two-week sessions um, over the course of the summer, and we accommodate about 225 kids per, uh, per session. Um, in some cases, there are kids who want to come to camp and due to some financial hardships, their parents are, unab are unable to cover the cost. In those cases, um, we do offer a scholarship program, a scholarship fund, so these kids can come to camp. Uh, this year, we're very pleased to have a donor that's, uh, that stepped forward and is willing to assist. Um, and that's the members of the Kyle John Boyce Memorial Co Scholarship Fund, and they've offered to donate $2,010 which will help cover, cover the cost for some of these kids for camp. Um, there's a bit of a personal connection here. Kyle was a camp counselor with uh, ODC many years ago. And um, in speaking to his supervisor at the time, Mark Albert, uh, he described, uh, described Kyle as being patient, conscientious, and caring as a counselor, which three of, three of the best qualities you can have as a counselor and to work with us. Uh, so on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Department, I'd like to say thank you to Kyle's mom, Kimberly Allen, who's in, in the back coming up to me right now, and uh, the other members of the Kyle John Boyce Scholarship Fund for their generous, generous donation and uh, making camp possible for some kids in Orangetown. Mm -hmm. Kimberly? Thank you, Eric. That was lovely. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. This is our committee here for Kyle John Boyce. Good evening, Supervisor Chris Day. Councilman Troy, Councilman, uh, and our Councilman that are missing. I see Jerry Batari's here, and um, to Paul Valentine and Divini, your thoughts are with us. Uh, town Attorney Rob Magrino and our lovely Town Clerk, Rosanna Sraga, uh, and everybody joining us here tonight. Uh, my name's Kimberly Allen, and some of our committee members are here tonight representing the Kyle John Boyce Memorial Fund uh, it's an established 501c3 not-for-profit charity organization, and it's in memory of our Kyle. Uh, my son, for those of you that don't know, he passed away in April uh, 2017 from a virus to his heart at the age of 39. Uh, as a young child, Kyle attended the town summer day camp uh, that Eric referred to for several years, and later in his teens, he uh, worked for our Parks and Recreation Department as a counselor, uh, taking care of third through fifth graders every summer. Kyle attended and graduated Albertus Magnus High School as president of the Student Council and president of his class in 95, 1995. He graduated from Providence College in 1993 and Pace University with two masters. For the last 15 years of his life, he worked for the town of Clarkstown Parks and Recreation Department as a senior park recreation leader at the Congress Lake Center, working mostly with children, teens, and seniors that he loved and was so much loved by all. In honor of Kyle and the legacy that he left behind, we have organized memorial picnic fundraisers for a day of fun, filled with laughter, hugs, and great stories to share, and a time for all of our family and friends to gather and celebrate our Kyle. All the proceeds are in honor of Kyle and his life work to benefit local children in the town of Orangetown. 
Uh, we also have spread out to the town of Clarkstown. We had a couple of requests, and being that he worked for them, we decided to branch out with that. Uh, they're to attend summer day camp, uh, and we've also established scholarships at Albertus Magnus High School uh, that will help pay tuition for teens that have possibly lost a parent before their graduation. Our next memorial fundraiser will be September 7th at Crocker's Picnic Grounds in Pomona. Please come on out, have a day of music, great food, and family fun uh, while helping kids in our backyard uh, right here in Orangetown stay safe and have fun during the summer months while their parents can still go to work every day. Um, our organization here, our committee, we proudly and humbly present you with a check for $2,010 to cover six kids to attend a two-week session at the town stay camp. So this is to you, sir. Why, why doesn't everyone in the committee come up front here and we'll get a photo? You can sort of stand in a row, we'll stand in a row. That's how we usually do it. Um, Amanda, can you grab a photo, you think? Or? Hi, thank you so much. Let's uh, shift over. Thank you again. So, thank you, everyone. And Kim is uh, is my secretary, so it's very great to see her organize this. And the event she put on was amazing last year. Um, I want to just go out of order a little bit since we just accepted the check physically. I think we should do the resolution number nineteen to actually legally accept it, because I'm holding it right now, and I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm going to move uh, to accept a donation of $2,010 for the Town of Orangetown Day Camp Scholarships from the Kyle John Boyce Memorial Scholarship Fund. Is there a second from Councilman? You want both second? Councilman Batara, Councilman Troy. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And these kids will appreciate it. All right. Moving on. We are going to workshop the agenda items, and then we'll come back for public comment, and then we will come back again for our two public hearings today. Um, just to reiterate, we have a public hearing on a proposed zone change for a vacant property at the corner of Manor Boulevard and North Middletown Road, and a proposed zone change for 576 Route 303 and adjoining properties. That's a continuation. The other one's the first night that's been in effect. So uh, the first set of resolutions on page two of the packet relate to that first public hearing, as does the next one, number six, on page three. Uh, this is all about changing from a CO to R15 zone for that property. Continued on for two more pages. And then on to page seven, uh, we have a resolution to open the continuation of the other public hearing uh, for the Beaver zone change, a proposed zone change. Then to continue or uh, close or et cetera for number eight for the same thing. Accept petition for CICRA for that uh, to amend the zoning map. Uh, hold on, is this the same? Oh, I'm sorry, the number nine is the to do the seeker for the uh, proposed zone change for the property on Greenbush Road and Route 303 we heard last week, that proposal, to, to send around the documents to the appropriate agencies. And then we also have to set the public hearing for that, which will be September 3rd at 8.05 p.m. That's called Ryerson Estate, 636 Greenbush Road. That's item number 10. Item number 11, we had a couple of folks on our sanitation commission who had odd terms. Uh, they were, Instead of being at the end of the year, they were in the middle of the year for some reason. I think that number 12 needs to edit the dates. It should be uh, whenever his, the end of his, his term was, which is, I think, April, May 1st, I think it would have been or end of April, I saw that. Um, Kim had that, yes. And then it's gotta go through December 31st of, 12, of 2024, so 1231. So that will be reflected when we do vote on it. 
then setting a public hearing day for September 3rd as well for the TOD uh, proposal. Uh, we will not be doing secret circulation prior to that, so we can get a sense of what everyone thinks in a public hearing first before we waste the time of sending out, because this is a bigger environmental review process. What's the term? It's a phase type one. type one, which is type not fun from what I'm told. Yeah, I want to. Comprehensive. Comprehensive. So there's no sense in sending it out before we at least do at least a public hearing on it and see where everyone stands. Um, 14, the, uh, the Thruway Authority has finally stood up a commission on tolls for the new Tappan Zee Bridge, which you will note our resolution refers to the new Tappan Zee Bridge as, not the Mario Cuomo Bridge. That said, we are putting in a re memorializing resolution uh, offering the town's opinion that the tolls should remain $5 um, for all passenger vehicles and further that if for some reason the folks in there just decide to raise the tolls, they should at bare minimum require a uh, resident or, or neighbor uh, separate rate of that $5 toll for Rockland and Westchester residents because of the negative impact a higher toll would have our, on our, uh, our ability to have commerce back and forth and on our commuters since we don't have much mass transit. So basically it says, please don't raise the tolls and if you decide to raise the tolls, don't raise them on Rockland and Westchester and that's the position that Orangetown would take, and then this will be sent to that committee or that commission. Uh, any thoughts on that one, gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then uh, resolution to approve 2019 certificates of sewer registration, lending assistance for the 2019 Tapan Colonial Day at DeWint House, September 28th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's a fun event. I think it rained out last year, so hopefully it stays dry this year. Resolution to approve the HVAC and mechanical services agreement for Johnson Controls. Eric, I feel like I've seen this before. Is that correct or? Sure, thank you. Recollection is correct. Um, at the last meeting we had the uh, on there for renewal, the contract for mechanical service mm -hmm. and this one well, so I guess it kind of reads the same, but it's actually for BMS service. BMS is the automation controls that kind of make everything work. It's the computer side of the mechanical stuff. So should we so say that in here? Like it, it does down on the one, two, three, third paragraph, HVAC, BMS oh, service. Oh, BMS services. Yeah. Okay. So it's just Johnson Controls considers it two separate contracts. So it's one is like people actually fix the machine. The other one sit at a computer kind of and do that. So. That works for me. I just want right. to make sure I wasn't crazy. All right, next we are accepting donation of a memorial be bench uh, in memory of Catherine Sakalo, uh, location TBD. Then a resolution to which just voted on was to accept that $2,010 check for the Town of Arnstown Day Camp Scholarships. Then uh, lending assistance for the 2019, how was this pronounced? Kale Moore. Bagpipes and Drums Competition. I'm the worst type of right here. I'm not good with the pronunciations. You just made it up. All right, that's that makes you a good Iberian. It's the Blarney. I don't. I'm just. I'm gonna be on, that's my Italian side, trying to figure out the real answer, and they just make it up. Um, okay, so that's on Saturday, August third, at the GAA Field, bagpipes and drums competition. Then pay vouchers for the audit, and then adjournment in memory of Joseph Mandel. Mandel. Okay. In Delhi, sorry. Um, coming on back, circling around to the public comment portion, we have now, just to clarify for anyone in the audience who's here for a specific reason, doesn't look like there are many people in the audience for a specific reason, doesn't look like there are many people in the audience, but public comment is three minutes on any topic you want. When the bell rings, that means wrap up that sentence, please. No more semicolons. We had a lot of semicolons last week. Just wrap up that sentence in the clause of the sentence you're in. And then we'll move on to the next one. State your name for the record. Also, we do have two public hearings going on, which are different. Those must be on the topic of the hearing. So if you want to talk on the hearing, unless you have at least eight minutes of things to say, keep it to the hearing. If you have five minutes or less, then just do it in the hearing. And uh, the other one should be for anything else. So first signed in, do we have a motion to open public comment? Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? 
All right, first sign in we have is Esther Baitler of Spark Hill. Esther, whenever you're ready. Good evening, Supervisor Day and town board members. Hi, my name is Esther Ann Baitler, and I'm a very neat consumer who lives in Spark Hill. Tonight I'm here to address to all of you about what is going on at Helen Hicks Hospital and staff getting their hours cut. I think this is awful. The time when people need their jobs, this shouldn't be going on. I was up there today and all I saw were signs saying people were going to get cut in their hours. That's totally not right. These people work hard with people with disabilities, the elderly, physical therapy, and I have to say that that's not right. And I would urge all of you to write letters to all of your elected officials telling them what is going on up there because this can't keep going on. I was up there and the lack of staff just threw me for a loop. I couldn't believe it. I, I just really think that you guys should get on the ball and write letters because people need to go to Helen Hayes for all of their clinics. Our venture people go there and now they're not gonna be able to go there. I, I, I cannot believe that they would have the audacity to cut these people especially uh, the nurses, Dr. Lindsay and the osteoporosis clinic, and all of them. I, I, I don't know what to say, but I'm asking all of you, please, please write to your elected officials and get them to put a stop on it. Without me, they wouldn't have anybody from our agency, and that's true. I, I really think that this is not right. It's inappropriate. Thank you, and have a great night. Thank you, Esther. Next, we have Mike Mandel of Pearl River. Whatever you're right, Mike. Uh, good evening, Supervisor Day and members of the uh, town board. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Mandel, a resident of Pearl River. Uh, at the July 9th meeting, uh, TOD, also known as Transit Oriented Development, was presented and discussed. Several different types of housing, including mixed use, were offered. Revitalization of the downtown Pearl River in the area of the train station is a good idea. However, it should not be to a scale that destroys the Hamlet's character by overdevelopment. One has only to look to the town to the south of Pearl River Park Ridge. It started with several developments, both residential and mixed use. But today, the character of the town is being dramatically changed with the construction of a project that covers at least two city-sized square blocks with a massive parking garage and over 250 units. This type of overdevelopment, in my opinion, must not be permitted to exist in our vision for a better downtown. In the meantime, we should correct conditions that are detrimental to the Hamlet's image. As you enter the downtown area from Route 304, there are several buildings which give the look to the town of one in decline. Uh, the building on the north side of Central Avenue between Main Street and Railroad Avenue has peeling paint or no paint at all in sections. Next, the Pearl River Post Office. The paint around the windows and the frames themselves are in need of urgent repair, especially on the railroad side. As you go by on the train, it looks like it's a, a slum from some part of the New York City. Uh, the landlord should be contact, contacted in the one instance and the U.S. Post Office both directly and through the federally elected officials uh, to have these problems collected before it leads to uh, similar problems as we see in the broken windows theory. You start out with one broken window. If you don't correct it, every other window gets broken. Uh, as a small town with a good stool district, Pearl River attracts people with the same values and the same dreams. Without this, the hamlet will cease to exist. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Is there anyone else here for public comment, not the hearings, the comment? Okay, seeing none, we have a motion to close public comment. 
Councilman Choi, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. All right, uh, to Mike's point, uh, we all agree 100%. We want to revitalize downtown Pearl River, not change what makes Pearl River Pearl River. We've got to adapt, but not change what the core of it is. Um, we don't, that anything we pass as a board will never allow for the scope of development you just described in that dense of an area. And I, the proposal doesn't, at the current state, do that either. Um, one thing in the proposal is the appearance code, which I think is interesting, which will allow for things to look a little bit better in terms of how we approve buildings. Um, and also one thing we've done for a couple of things we've done to try to help with that concept is, is the adoptive spots in the downtown by the train station, the Bronzdorf Park, the cannon's been painted, the, the, the grass has been fixed, new plantings have been put in, the, the masonry's been fixed. Uh, we got Congresswoman Lowy to get the post office to fix its fla flagpole finally. Um, so we've done a lot of work and, and also the train station itself, the train station building was a disaster. Still has a, some damage to it, but the paint was all messed up and we got that repainted through our own efforts, through volunteer efforts of folks in the community. So we have to continue those efforts and I think uh, it will help uh, keep Pearl River uh, as good as it is and, and make it even better. Mr. Mandel's uh, observations are correct. I live just north. Of, I live just north of Park Ridge, and I've gone down to Park Ridge. It's a major change that happened down in Park Ridge. I always think it's interesting if we have some type of development right on the Jersey borderline. The Jersey people go nuts, but they don't give a damn what impact it has on Rockland County and particularly on Pearl River because that's a major development on that street. And they got one, really one avenue, Kinderkamack Road that goes through there. So I don't know, I, I don't think it's smart development. And I agree, that's something we gotta be very careful about when we get into the, uh, the transit-oriented density. Uh, it can be positive, it can be negative, it depends on how it is done. So there's something to be looked at. In terms of the post office, well, that's great. They got the flagpole. The rest of the building yeah, is seriously need in uh, fixing up. And there are some other properties that the the uh, code enforcement need to chase after too. So, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we are still a little early for either public hearing. So what we'll do is we'll go through the other resolutions on the agenda and then go back to the public hearing portions. It's only 7.53, and the first one's supposed to start at 8.05. So skipping forward to doo, 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 doo. page, that's, okay, page six, resolution number nine is the first non-public uh, hearing today resolution. No, no, we're not, go we're not going yet, Frank. Oh, you're moving, okay. No, I'm not. All right, I thought you were walking up to the podium for a second. It's like, I just said, not yet. Okay. Um, this is to do the circulation of, uh, for Secra for the proposed zone change we'll be hearing in September for Greenbush Road. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make that. Motion by Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then number 10, which is two pages away. This is to set the public hearing for September 3rd at 8.05 p.m. for Ryerson Estates, 636 Greenbush Road. Is there a motion? Yes. Councilman Batari, second by Councilman Troy. All in favor? Aye. Resolution to reappoint Fred Chadwick as a member of the Sanitation Commission through December 31st, 2024. Uh, is there retroactive to June 1st? Is there a motion? Councilman Batari, second by Councilman Troy. All in favor? Aye. Resolution to appoint Christopher Huber, member of the Sanitation Commission. Uh, retroactive to the date he last had his term ended was what we will put, put in, we will which we'll fill in through 1231-24. Is there a motion? So Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Resolution is set public hearing date September 3rd, 2019 at 8.15 p.m. Regarding the TOD proposal uh, zoning ordinance, is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Councilman Batari, second by Councilman Troy, all in favor? Aye. Memorializing resolution opposing new Tappan Zee bridge toll increases, is there a motion? So mo we'll move as a group and second as a group. <laughs> unanimous <laughs> motions, unanimous seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All unanimous there. I think you're winning that one. I think so. You're all very, no, very important issue. <laughs> Resolution to approve 2019 Certificate of Sewer Registration. Is there a motion? Yes. Councilman Choi, Semi Councilman Batari. All in favor? 
Resolution to approve lend assistance for the Colonial Day in Japan. Motion by Councilman Batari, second by Councilman Troy. All in favor? Aye. Resolution to approve the Mechanical Services Agreement for HVAC for the BMS services. Is there a motion? Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari. Resolution to accept a donation of memorial ben bench for a memory of Catherine Sakalo. Motion by Councilman Batari, second by Councilman Troy. Aye. All in favor? Resolution to accept, we passed this one already, sorry, number 19 was voted on. Number 20, resolution to approve lend assistance for the Kilmore? Kilmore. Kilmore. Bagpipes and drums competition at the Rock County GAA field, Saturday, August 3rd. Is there a motion? No. Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. We're on to the audit, Jeff. Do your thing. Okay, uh, the audit for tonight's town board meeting consists of uh, two warrants for a total of 1.39 million. The first warrant had 28 vouchers for 1.039 million. Uh, following items of interest, number one, Capasso, 62,000 for recycling. Number two, CSEA Employee Benefit Fund, 31,000 for CSEA Dental. Number five, Department of Civil Service, 763,000 for healthcare benefits. And then the second warrant had 155 vouchers for 351,000 items of interest. Number nine, Miracle Recreation Company, 64,000 for parks playground equipment. Number 11, South Orangetown Central School District, 50,000 for the pool usage. Number 13, Tilcon, uh, 21,000 for highway materials. And number 14, Van Bordo Ford, 25,000 for a parks vehicle, which was bonded. Any questions on the audit? Questions on the audit? Yep. All right, thank you, Jeff. Do you have a motion? So much. Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. All right. We're going to go back to the beginning. Rob, I'm going to ask for your opinion on this. It's 757. It's supposed to start 805. There's no one here to comment. Can we start or should we do a five minute recess? We should probably you want to do a quick executive session? I did have a personnel matter to uh, discuss with the board briefly. Yeah, we can knock that out. Briefly. I'm going to move us into executive session for matters of specific personnel. Is there a second? No second. Yes. Councilman Troy, all in favor? Aye. We'll be right back. All right, I went ahead and move us out of executive session. Is there a second? Second on that? Yep. Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, the first public hearing again is for the corner of Manor Boulevard and 268 North Middletown Road, uh, Pearl River, from CO to R15. So I'm going to go ahead and one, uh, make sure that we got all the publication, if we have any submissions and such. Oh, we have to vote to open it first. Sorry, hold on. Sorry, Rosanna, cut you off. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? Sure. Councilman Troy, somebody Councilman Batari. Rosanna, any submissions or comment there? from the Rockland County Department of Planning, Orangetown Planning Board, and the uh, notice of public hearing. I think he supplied a uh, affidavit of posting. Affidavit of posting, too. Yes. I saw, I know yes. that they were posted, because yes. someone asked we me about it. Right so. Yeah, no, go ahead, Rob, sorry. No, just briefly, the uh, county planning letter I have. Yes. Um, two, uh, actually three of significance. One was uh, they thought that there was an, uh, may have been an error um, because it, it's going from the correct, the current zoning is CO, uh, and the proposal is to go to R15. Uh, some of the paperwork that went to county planning said that the zone was CC, but we double checked and the public hearing notice was correct. Um, so the CO uh, is the correct zone that it currently is. Um, the uh, second item of significance um, from the county planning letter, and that's uh, dated. June 12th of 2019, uh, is obviously that the zone was approved 
uh, if the change approved, that uh, they be sent the copy to resolution so that uh, they can change the map. Um, and finally, they say uh, the town should take a more comprehensive review of the area to determine if other action, if other parcels beyond the subject site should also be changed to R15. Um, I did put in the zoning, I'm sorry, in the uh, proposed resolution, um, you know, that area of uh, Manor Boulevard, that's kind of the end of Manor Boulevard, which is residential, transitioning into Middletown Road, which is more commercial. There is some limited residential on uh, Middletown, but, um, you know, it's up to the board, but it just seems that, you know, going further residential either direction on uh, Middletown at that point wouldn't really be appropriate. It's kind of, as I said, a transition from the residential of Manor mm -hmm. onto the commercial of Middletown. That seems like the same thing they say for most zoning. Is to look, at, to look at other areas right. around it. And then the town planning board uh, made two good points, and uh, which also could be made uh, conditions, is that access to the property, I'm sorry, their uh, memo is dated June 26, uh, should be off of Manor Boulevard, and the front of the house should be oriented toward Manor Boulevard, which mm -hmm. again makes sense because... That's where the continuation is. of that and, residence. Yeah. And again, if uh, the board's so inclined, I, that's in the proposed resolution, that that would be a condition of approvals at the, the uh, building or the house face manor and the, any driveway beyond uh, off That makes manor. sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's nothing that requires an override? No. Okay. That's good because we only have three people. That's right. Yeah. All right. So given that, I'm going to go ahead and invite the applicant up to uh, re-summarize the situation and then we'll ask any questions we have. and open the floor to, I'm assuming no one to speak because no one's here to speak. Go ahead. Today in the uh, town board, appreciate the opportunity for the petition. And uh, just to reiterate, we'd like to propose a new house and we do agree with all the comments. We're gonna face the house on Manor Boulevard and we'd like to have the driveway also on the side street as well. I think it makes most sense. Um, other than that, <laughs> we've had a hard time with this property as far as commercial, so I think it makes all the sense in the world to switch it to residential. Now, just to clarify, didn't it used to have a house on it? Or there was a so house there was on it. was a house, a yes. residential use pre previous to this. Previously there was, and it burned. Okay, so, so there never was a commercial use on this property. Never, never was it's a commercial. It's always been residential, then it burned down, and then the, the non-conforming pre-existing use expired, essentially. Correct. Because of the time that passed. How, much, how long has it been since the house burned down? I'd say about four years. Okay, and you've been trying to get yep. commercial tenancy since then or sale. Okay. Any questions? No. It's a relatively small scale, simple thing. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think Robbie, what was that? I don't think there's anyone, there's no one else in the public here. Everyone else seems to be either be paid by the town or by a, an applicant or something. So, okay. all right. Do I have, I have a motion to close the public hearing from Cal Rob, should we be closing it yet, just to be clear? Uh, yeah, this thing's I don't want to do anything wrong here. All right. Councilman Troy moves to close the public hearing. Second by Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. Okay. You okay. Can Thank you very much. Go ahead, grab your seat, and we'll move forward. So the public hearing is therefore closed. Uh, this the next one is to adopt a negative declaration with respect to the, uh, the local law for environmental. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari. All in favor? And the final one, item number six, is to adopt local law to change from CO to R15 for that lot with the conditions of driveway and house facing onto the side street of Manor Boulevard along with the, just like the neighbors. Um, is there a motion? Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? All right, thank you very much. Simple, nice and easy. Next. I mean, we're only two minutes early on this one, Rob. We can... Okay, well, so we'll do slow motions. Okay. Do I have a motion to open the continuation of the public hearing for uh, the Bieber zone change on Route 303? Councilman Troy, second by Councilman Batari, all in favor? Aye. Okay, so this is a continuation of the public hearing. I know that we've received submissions. Last time we didn't have submissions in time, I think it was the main reason we delayed it, and also there were some changes. So before we go to Mr. Phillips, we're going to get a summary of those comments and stuff, and that way you can also talk about them. Uh, Rob, well, while you're talking, Rosanna, this was notice and everything. You got the notices and such? Yeah. Okay. And go ahead, Rob, with the county planning. Sure. It was. So we received a, a letter from county planning uh, dated uh, June, I'm sorry, July 11th, 
2019. Uh, and they have a number of comments. I'll read them. Uh, the significant ones are all significant, but uh, items that certainly the board and the applicant should be addressing. Um, number one, it says, uh, the town of Orangetown did extensive research over a two-year period to create the uh, Route 303 overlay zoning district, working with county, state, and federal agencies, as well, as well as the public, to ensure the resulting zoning requirements would provide strategies to improve the roadway's operation, aesthetics, and safety aspects. The rezoning of these seven parcels from the LO zoning district to the CC zoning district will result in less stringent requirements, thereby intensifying the uses along the New York State Route 303 corridor. Safety aspects are of paramount importance, as this was one of the underlying reasons for the study. In addition, several other goals of the Route 303 overlay zone were to protect, preserve, and improve neighborhood commercial areas, discourage unattractive retail strip development, and promote parking in the rear yard. These goals are achieved by requiring many requirements, including a 25-foot vegetated buffer along the property line, adjacent to the Route 303 right-of-way, connections between abutting parking lots, shared driveway, and internal circulations to minimize turning movements onto Route 303 and provide a traffic impact study and access management plan. Uh, furthermore, Article 13, Section 13.3, state that's of the town code, states that any rezoning shall be in compliance with Article 13, that no building shall be erected in, except in compliance with the provisions of Article 13. The town board must ascertain uh, that this zone change res will, will result in meeting the intent and scope of the Re Route 303 Sustainable uh, Developmental Study. Development study. Um, the next one uh, is the bulk requirements between the LO Zoning District and CC zoning, zoning District are quite disparate. Two acres, lot widths of 300 feet, street frontage of 150 feet, front side and rear yards of 100 feet, and the total side yard of 200 feet are all requirements in the LO Zoning District, which it currently is. In contrast, the CC Zoning District only requires one acre, lot widths, and street frontages of 100 feet, front rear yards of 50 feet, side yards of 20 feet, and total side yards of 35 feet. Most of the bulk requirements for the proposed CC Zoning District are only half of what is required in the LO Zoning District, resulting in more intensive uses, greater lot coverage, and impervious surface area, and more traffic generation. The town board must determine if intensifying the uses by approving the zone changes of almost eight and a half acres and six and a half parcels will result in more traffic conflicts, reduced safety, and a decreased quality of life for the surrounding area. In addition, the town must analyze whether the parcels comprising the restaurant, I'm sorry, the resultant zone change could meet all requirements of both the zoning district and Route 303 overlay zone. Um, and the, <laughs> The most uh, significant one, really, the next one says, given this proposal does not make sense to rezone the parcel of CC, thereby intensifying and expanding uses that the town had identified as less reliable in the Re 303 uh, corridor. Um, then there's some uh, information about uh, some shortfalls in the petition, which uh, the council will address, but um, there are uh, 11 uh, changes in all. And uh, again, most of them really uh, are along the lines of what I've read. So and, uh, at the town, I'm sorry, the town planning board uh, also uh, made some recommendations which uh, might be best addressed by uh, Director Slavin. Just the, uh, are these things that require the override or to adapt to? Right, all those certainly that say must, I mean, they say recommend the following modifications, but then it says the town must engage in um, uh, you know, these uh, studies and, and make certain findings. Um, so either either studies. the board will do it or say we don't want to do that and override it. But in this instance, it seems at least to do it and then, um, you know, make a determination whether or not it's acceptable to change the zone. So okay. that's part of the process. All right. And then we're going to get from the town planning board and then we'll get to the applicant. We'll go Mr. Jane, you want to step up and summarize the town planning board's comments? You should all have a copy of the uh, package yes. that was sent over by the planning board clerk. I think the yeah, town the planning board is basically in agreement with the comments it? that the county planning board has made. And you also see there's a copy of a letter of review that I provided for the planning board in reference to the subject properties. Of most importance, I think that you'd want to look at page two of five which will outline the zoning district uses based on the current zoning and the requested zoning. The first set is the 
uses permitted by right. So those are ones that they can just come into the planning board, obtain a permit, and move forward. There's no variances required, no special permits. And that's broken down for each district. Now from LO to CC zone, there's also a provision in the CC that says refer to the CS zoning district. So what that does is it gives you even more options to the uses permitted. And again, that's all outlined on page 205. Then the other provisions of our code allow for what is called a special permit. And they are also outlined for each district. And then there's conditional uses, which obviously the special permit and the conditional uses are more difficult to obtain. But I think you can see that going to the CC district gives a lot more opportunity for different types of uses to be applied for. We've also provided a table of bulk regulations, which is the 11 by 17 page. So I took our massive amount of bulk regulations and I broke it down onto one sheet for just those three zones. And you can see that the LO district requires much larger parcels of property in order to be developed. When you go down to CC and CS, the minimum lot area for the property has become 2,500 square feet. So the idea of those areas was more of like a downtown shopping district, similar to like a downtown Pearl River, where you have much denser development and the lots are contiguous to each other. And then you end up like a strip center design. And that is something that the Route 303 overlay, as well as our comprehensive plan, specifically states should not be happening, happening in this area, that it should actually be reduced and not allow for any commercial strip development. So in reference to the reports that were given from the planning board and the county planning board, oh, I should go back. I outlined the comprehensive plan on page three through five and what their comments were within that study that was adopted in 2002. Most of the bulk requirements for CC district are only half or less than half of what is required in the LO, zone, LO zoning district. And the CS district is even less restrictive than the CC resulting in a more intensive uses greater lot coverage and impervious area and more possible uh, traffic generation. The petitioner indicates that the provo proposed zone change is consistent with the town's adopted comprehensive plan. However, no information has been provided by the applicant to support that determination. My review letters from April 23rd and July 16th, the county planning board comments and the Orange Town planning board have questioned the consistency of this issue as well. And would like to see more backup documentation. Again, the goals, um, several of the goals and objectives are in direct contrast to the comprehensive plan. The most significant one is to control strip development along 303 through more restrictive zoning and lot and bulk revisions. The petition also stated that the proposed action will not result in any increase in traffic above the present levels. How was this determined? What is, was a traffic study completed? My understanding at this point is it has not been done. In order to accurately determine if traffic will increase based on the zone change request, an analysis must be completed showing current conditions and traffic calculations for future uses and future development and possible subdivision of those parcels. While the, re the requested action of a zone change in and of itself is, does not immediately show potential ad, adverse impacts, careful consideration must focus on the permanent development and uses within the CC zone and the CS zone and how the future development may have potential negative impacts on the immediate surrounding area, the Route 303 corridor, and the town as a whole. Will this proposed action re result in a change in the use or the intensity of the uses of the land? How will future development under the CC and the CS allowable uses 
affect our traffic volumes and patterns along 303 Erie Street and the surrounding neighborhoods? Will future development impair the character or quality of the existing community? And what are the potentially cumulative effects and impacts of future development under the requested zone? So those are the issues I think the town board really needs to look at, what the long-term impacts would be. Thank you, Jen. Sorry, questions for Jane before she steps down so we don't have to call her back? No, All right. Fine. Thank you. No, All right. Frank, you're up. Frank Phillips from the law offices of Phillips and Millman, 148 South Liberty Drive, Stony Point, New York, on behalf of Gerard Bieber and Rese Bieber, who are the owners of the property at 576 Route 303 Blauvelt. I think it's important, a, a lot of the stuff that's been said here before is quite obvious, but I think it's important for me to interweave together or um, the chronology of what has occurred in this particular application with what the uh, comprehensive plan is. There was no time that my client in the initial application was looking at putting a plethora of lots into this particular zone change. Basically, in January 2017, I'm going to go, I'm not going to give you a long diatribe, so don't be scared because I'm referring to dates. But um, in January of 2017, there was a meeting with myself and the director at the time, and we did meet with a town attorney representative. And the reason when it came about is my client owned a piece of property on Route 303. It was being used as a residential lot, which he's currently renting. And, the, and all the lots around him were basically office. Um, there was the uh, mall a few lots down the way. And then the, the, in, the, in the recent past, at that particular time, that there was a zone change granted across the street, um, the Cuomo property, which went from R15 to CC. And then there was also a mixed use variance uh, near his property too. So we, it was just investigating whether in fact there could be a potential zone change um, because my client's lot was non-conforming. So it wasn't a situation here where my client's gonna build a strip mall on Route 303 and intensify the traffic. That was never the intent. In fact, when we first went in, it was only gonna be, he was requesting a zone change for his particular lot. Uh, but unfortunately, it was not contiguous to the CC lot, uh, which was north of my client's property. And we felt that in discussions with the director at the time, that it was consistent with the Route 303 overlay because we pulled out a section that says, gives owners of non-conforming properties the, quote, additional incentive to upgrade and redevelopment of the site, encourage them to address design guidelines established by the town on Route 303. So in essence, this wasn't a situation where my client's gonna want to put all these lots together, put a strip mall down, intensify the traffic, initially, the best laid plans was he was going to he was going to redevelop his lot, which was a non-conforming lot, and the zone change would allow that because it would bring it into conformity. So then, subsequent to that, we submitted in February 2017 our zone change application. We were asked to prepare a conceptual plan. Axel Skataza and Ziegler, actual Nasser and Natcher and Ziegler, prepared it. We appeared before the board. Um, first, we had the conceptual plan. We met with the director. We had a meeting with the director at the time, the town attorney and the town supervisor at that particular time. And we presented in May of 2017, after working on this for five months, a conceptual plan. At that particular time, as things they were unsure what the makeup of the board was going to be the following year with an election upcoming, let's call it the way it is, we were told to hold off at the application, which we did for a, for a year period of time. Yeah. Subsequent to the, uh, that, when things settled down, we had a meeting with officials, the town attorney's office, and so on, and the direction that was determined was to bring in other property owners, so it wouldn't only be whether it's Mr. Bieber's lot or Mr. Valentine's lot, but it would be all the lots that were north and south of him on Route 303, so it wouldn't be spot zoning. So I subsequently sent out a letter to all the property owners along that corridor that were close to Mr. Bieber's property to see if they were willing to, willing to join in the zone change. 
I received responses, but to get signatures in December 2018, I personally walked up and down Route 303, met with people, and they discussed the zone change, and they signed a petition that was eventually submitted um, in January or February, sorry, we revised it, in February of 2019. Then we appeared before this board on March 12th of 2019 with an informal presentation. At that particular informal presentation, we were instructed that it may be beneficial. Now look, we started with one lot. Of course, if you're gonna keep adding lots, then you know the, the rationale for a traffic study becomes more relevant because you're putting more lots on. We were told to put it two more additional lots. So again, the petition was amended. We put it two more additional lots down below. However, at the public hearing on April 30th, 2019, one of the lots that we were told to include, the gentleman came in and didn't want his lot in the zone change. So again, we had to revise the petition, which I made the corrections. There were minor typos in the revised petition, which we put together here as neatly as I could with exhibits and a narrative, even though for some reason in some of the comments they said they didn't get a narrative, but it was, it was attached there too. So now, subsequent to that, it becomes an issue now to well, is this gonna cause traffic problems? We did have a meeting with the town attorney's office and um, the, the new director, or sorry, the present director, to go over what those options were. One was to have this traffic study. We got an estimate for the traffic study. The concern that my client has now is he's doing a traffic study for all these lots that we were told by the town to put into the application. However, it's gonna cost them approximately $30,000 plus to do a traffic study. Does he wanna do that? So um, basically the, his property was surrounded by commercial properties and mixed use. It was non-conforming. We wanted to bring it into conformity. Um, we feel that it's not, it, if you're looking at it, it's not consistent with the land use vision of, uh, along Route 303, as I quoted at the beginning. And, it's, and basically, um, we're looking at a conceptual plan to upgrade the, the, upgrade the lot, put buffers, improve the aesthetics. We drafted a site plan. It's not a strip mall. It's a commercial rateable. And now we're back before the board again and continuing this public hearing. So it has been two and a half years since we embarked on this endeavor. And it seems like it's like, I guess they call it in another sense a moving target throughout this whole process. It feels like we just keep, you know, it keeps a moving target. And that's not the fault of anybody else. And I understand what Ms. Slavin said and the stuff that she quotes from the comprehensive plan is correct. Last time I was here, I quoted the proposed amendment to the plan, but it's on the website, but I guess it hasn't been passed by the board. So that's where we are now. We have over a course of two and a half years looked for direction. Every time it seems like we make some headway or gain some traction, it's another step backwards with something else, and that's what happens in planning. I'm not here to whine or complain about the process, but I thought it was just very important for the board to understand here that my client's vision is not to all of a sudden throw, all the, throw up a strip mall on Route 303 when he's got a small lot and cause all kinds of traffic problems. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the points you bring up about kind of the moving target are very valid in that, you know, we did say, for good reason though, to allow you to continue, we did say it would make sense to go forward because the, the fact that the property was disconnected from the CC zone, it wasn't like, say the last one where it was already always residential, it touched the residential zone, it could be just spread out. We sat down and tried to figure out if we could right. do that and we couldn't. Um, you know, that then caused the scope to be larger in order to make it work. If Coincidentally, the property touching the back end of your property or, or the side was, of your, of your client's property was CC, we probably wouldn't be sitting here looking at as many lots as we are right now. It's just the only way you could move forward. Um, no, there's, there's, a, there's the CC, then there's a, there's a strip, and then there's Valentine's lot, which is a mixed use, and then yours. Yeah, so there's a strip of non-CC between the two. Um, Basically, you know, I, I think the question becomes, one, I don't see anyone here to speak. There's no one here to speak on this, correct? Okay. Oh, we got one. Okay, good. 
So we'll get to the public comment portion. I'm sorry, I didn't see you back there, sir. Um, at this size and scale, if the board is still inclined to hear it and is, is, is open to the possibility of voting on it, the only thing we'd be able to do is then get these studies that are recommended, because I don't think the board is inclined to override county planning on this issue. Well, we not tonight. We couldn't. Well, anyway. yeah, you we couldn't tonight because of the I mean, math. No, but we would have to have all four of the people <laughs> who are able to vote on this vote in favor of it to override. I don't think we we're inclined to. That said, you know, maybe there's something to be done to descale it a little bit. Me in the middle. I mean, like the bottom properties with the church. Do they have to be included in this petition? I don't know. You know, it's still hello down there. What's, so what's the zoning on the other parcels that were included in this? They're currently LO, I believe. Right. Everything there is LO. And Correct. if you go down south of that, so it becomes LO. So it, it, they would just, we would just, the line would be not be shifted as far south, essentially. But right now it's CC at the corner where that shopping center is. And they're trying to extend the CC down further from that corner and push the LO down. But the LO doesn't have to be pushed as far down as it is right now. It could be pushed to, you know, if you look at this map, you got the, the L-shaped property and then these four. It doesn't yeah, have to include this or this. It could just stop at the bottom of that L-shaped property, you know. Because you had up here, you have up here. I tried to highlight it and make it as simple as possible in one of the exhibits, which is H. You have. I'm sorry to interrupt you though. If you were no, talking, go ahead. Is the CC, and then there's this little gap here um, between the CC zone and my client. And then the the other zone change that was uh, granted it was on the R15 across the street. And then back behind that, I believe that it's CS. I'm not sure. I don't have it. Yeah, there's a CS in there either. So. It, it, that's the thing that there has been also changes to the zones toward a, a commercial orientation in this area in the past. So it's not like it hasn't been done. Um, anyway, we can marinate on that. We have a public someone from the public who would like to speak. So maybe we let them speak first. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Thank um, you. So, sir, if you just. Step up and just hold on one second because I got to try to reprogram the timer. You can step up there and I'll tell you when it's time to go. Hold on one second. Um, clear. You know what? I'm just going to set on my phone. You're going to have five minutes instead of three because it's public hearing. Um, okay. And I will set the timer here. And then when you start to speak, if you could just read your name into the record, if you sure. don't mind. So whenever you're ready. Okay, my name begin. is Joseph Menchik. I own the property at 574 Route 33, immediately south of the uh, proposed change. Uh, I was not aware of any development plan for the Biba lot. Uh, I wasn't noticed that anything was filed. I just, for information, I'd like to know what it is. Like the specific site plan for that property? Yeah. So, okay, we'll get that. If you, you can show that to him again. Do you have any other comments you want to offer? Well, the, the only comment I have is we share a common driveway, and I'm concerned that any development uh, would affect the driveway. It's not designed for any sort of heavy use. It's designed for really light use. Which property are you, sir? 574 Route 303. You're the one directly underneath, okay. Yeah. So were you aware of the application for the zone change generally, though? Yes, you I was aware, aware and I did, okay, I did sign it. on to it. You signed on but, to it. But I wasn't aware of any proposed development, so. And I'm not saying I'm object, objecting to anything. You just wanted to see it. I just want to know what it is and see how totally it might affect it. me. Okay, so if that's what your main, that's, that's all you're really concerned that, is? That's so my concern at this point. I'll yeah. just ask Mr. Phillips so you could pull that exhibit up. And uh, what do we need before you before you answer? Before you answer, we're gonna have to answer at the microphone so it's right into the record. Um, yeah, yeah, Frank, why don't you step up? You could stay there so you could see it while you're talking to him, but I need him at the podium so he can no be heard. How are you doing, Jeff? Hi. Yeah, it's the conceptual plan, as indicated in exhibit. L, L to the petition, which everybody got. I, this yes, serves, no, we received it. it, it, it yeah, it's there. been circulated. You know, it's, it's that circulated. was part of the things that were sent around. Correct. Us. It was circulated to even all the petitioners. Shows a 7,500 square foot building and then the parking Pun on the side here. And this is the common driveway coming in? Yes, correct. 
This is this is right here is Route 303. Route 3. That'd be the building. That'd be the parking in the back, and that's the you know it's not going to impede that that driveway. It won't impede the driveway. Okay, I'm just concerned that the development stage okay. that the driveway. Can that. I can keep that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, all set. Okay. Great. Thank you for your time. Okay. okay. All right. Seeing no one else, uh, is there anyone else for public comment? Seeing no one else from the public, we'll go back to our discussion. Um, what do you guys think about the direction this, this should go in? The, there's, the, there's the comments that have to be require a four vote. They're going to have to put a lot of money into a study if they do it for all these properties. It's still going to be a sizable amount of money if we cut it back a little bit. You know, if this study comes back good, are we? Is this something that's going to potentially garner support? And, or are we going to make these folks? I don't want to make them spend thirty thousand dollars or even twenty if it gets cut back. If everyone's thinking, yeah, you know what, try to get a sense of it. I personally, if it comes back okay, I'd be fine with it. If it, if it doesn't come back okay, I wouldn't be. I can't make a decision without the study, though. I was I was the one person who was here for the comprehensive plan. You know, I was part of the comprehensive <laughs> plan, and I think in a lot of ways it's worked. In some ways it hasn't worked, but in some ways it has worked in terms of the new development that has gone on in 303, where the buffers are in the, uh, in the front of the buildings. Uh, you can take Lowe's, you, you stop and shop, you, uh, Toyota that was uh, north of that. All right, well, positive. One of the things that we also tried to, and we did stop, and stop and shop in that uh, area that we're trying to put in uh, some type of uh, fast food restaurant and I've talked about this at the time. I'm a McDonald's guy, and I'm not in favor of McDonald's on 303. And that's, I guess, the concern of the comprehensive plan was to keep that type of development out. In terms of this thing here, in terms of Mr. Beaver's lot, I don't have a concern with it. I don't. Um, the, the question is, once you start moving down to the uh, once you keep moving down to the CS's, I'm sorry, the hello. I'm sorry, it's the CC, CC down, yeah. I was throwing my letters in the air. They, when you're going down to CC, there's somewhere in the line line, now the next chunk of if properties go, Ooh, you did CC, can we be, instead of LO, can we be CC? Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, that's, that's definitely a concern. Um, but in terms of this particular development, I am not concerned. So it's a thing, one of the things you definitely need is you need four votes. We yes. do not have the four votes here tonight. In terms of the traffic study, you know, I don't, you're saying it's $30,000 for traffic? You know, in my time here, I've seen a lot of traffic studies. <laughs> and I don't think most of them are worth $30,000, but that's a, my, my, own, <laughs> my own opinion. But the, uh, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely a concern in terms of all the properties going to your CC, you know. So, you know, you need the four votes is what you need. So if that's what it takes to get there, that's what you got to do. You know? Rob, do you need the four if he does? Do we need the four if he does all these things? Or, or will we still need four if he does the study? And yeah, you, you, you'd probably need the four because if, like if you read the... You have enough... There's enough stuff there. Right? Yeah, I, you know, I read, you know, the, the county's concerns. I'm more concerned with our planning board's concerns that I am about the county. Well, the yeah. county doesn't do a good job in terms of stopping development in certain areas in the county. You know, and down here they hammer us. You know, it's a, it's a joke. But can I say that? <laughs> um, I heard you. <laughs> but I'm more concerned with the planning, the, 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 uh, pl our own planning board. I am concerned with the, uh, with the, uh, director of the building department. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I don't know what, what the votes will be, and I, I think, you know, the applicant, I guess, does deserve at least some... Some sense that at least right. a shot. I mean, you want to be burning the money, at least the, the other chance. The one thing I was going to ask, and I don't know if Jane can address it or, or Frank wants to address it, um, and just looking at it, the, the, the lots going down, uh, I lost my place, of course. Um, it, the last one that's part of it is, a, is currently a church, is that right? Yes. Um, no. No, that's one below the church, yeah, right? He's paving for it, but the, the farthest back. 
Okay, and then before the that, church is the, the church. last so one below that L-shaped property. It's the bigger parcel. I don't remember what what was the kind of circumstances as to why the, the church and everyone else was at it. Was that part of the that wasn't part of the original scope, no, right? No, the church was always was, church was always part of it. it. Was the expect, expand it was part of it, but getting somebody. I'm not gonna. I, if it's a church, it's a church. But I don't know. I was walking the property. I this, they're incommunicado. <laughs> haven't really got. You haven't gotten in touch with them. Have been able to. I've been there. But you have. You have been able to speak <laughs> with anyone. I haven't gotten anybody with. A, I can't figure out who is the authoritative person there. Okay. Well, I get. And again, maybe Jane can address this. But um, I, if it is a church, uh, <laughs> it's. That would be consistent with the zone that you want to change it to. I guess yeah. that might have been one of the reasons. Um, so that one would be okay. The other one you mentioned was, um, what did you say was it? A and T made the property below that. What do they South. operate there? What's, what what what's works K &T there? What is K &T? It's a, what's it's the a, use? I know it's an office. Jane, do you know what the use is there? I think it's just a paving company. Yeah. But, but like a, a. Their office is in a, in a house. It would have to be an office. It can, they, don't, they don't have the use for the actual paving equipment to be. All right, so that would kind of. Maybe it could be parking it, yeah. The, um, there's two lots, though. Is it, is it, are they both owned by the paving company? It looks like there's a. No, no. Oddly it doesn't go as far as that. It stops at KMP Paving. The next one was, was the, um, the Mayor Park lot, so I pulled it out. All it was right. here last time. Yep. So, do 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 we want to suggest, Jerry? Are you if this if they go out? Are you open to this? I mean, is this something you're? Or are you are you are hardened on this against it or for it or somewhere in the middle right now? I'm not hardened against it. I just like to. to uh, Can't come up and see what we're going to do with it. Uh, what, what do we what do you want to do with the property? Uh, I have the conceptual plan. It's not there. If you have the petition. I gave mine away. It's um, <laughs> exhibit uh, L, I believe. L, I think. So. Yeah, it's exhibit L. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank, I maybe you might want to get up there and just answer the question. Yeah, it's, okay. it's this one. Uh, no, it's not there. It's part of the petition. I don't know if you have yeah, a petition with you. This is it. It's showing a building and parking, but. Correct. Yeah. No, it's, not, it's not in the back. It's not in the back. No. Yes. No, it's in the petition that we have. You have it right there. Yeah. Right? So yeah. The, you pass that around so the, so the I sure. petition at all. Yeah. We went through. <laughs> yeah. What? So that's I guess speech, right? I, I, before I give mine up, I'll I'll pass it. But I guess, uh, and again, it's a move. I hate to make it a moving target again, but what was the reasoning for going beyond? You know, you have the Valentine property, your property. I guess just making it those two, or maybe including Menchik, like is, is there a, a reason based on current uses that the current, like I just said for the church, like changing it to CS would be consistent with what's there already? I mean, would it make sense to take some of those lots off? What, well, that, that maybe if you want to address it. that. Here's the, well, no, like, again, the, the we're, we're, we want right? to make it continuous, yeah, to make it contiguous <laughs> yeah. and make it more of the deck here. No, no, no. To Basically, the, the issue is the Listen, shape of the Frank, lots. The, I, I understand where you're coming from, but you know, by the same token, it's not, the petition is, is leaves a little bit to be desired. What I'm saying is, I if, you, if you that. take, I spent four if, hours revising it and put all the deeds in order, so I take offense. No, to I, I understand, but we don't necessarily need all the deeds. But the CC zone, where you see 12, 12 is in a CC zone. What I'm saying is, those are the one, the ones that are closest That's to the CC. Simple. Correct. There, it's in the CC zone. The issue, Rob, with with and we this is in the CC zone. We have a, I have a whole thing here, and yeah. I highlighted the Thank thing, you. and I put everybody's name, section, block, and no, lot that's numbers. That's not my question. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is, the ones that are to, to just expand the CC zone. Yours is what the second one in. No, so there's the third. A strip, there's the a third. Third. Okay. third one in because there's still a strip. One of the lots is half CC. Well, not half. Partially CC yes. and partially LO. Right. The issue with the, the reasoning behind the initial expansion, and again, this is just to try to make it happen. If you look at the shape of the lots and where the lines are, 
he's got lot 13, or whatever the heck all the prefixes, prefixes are, is split by the zone, so it's half CC, half LO. And then that's an L shape, which wraps around the back yes. of four other properties, which two of which he would need to also do. He would also need uh, Paul's property and then his own property. So right. he's already got two, one of which goes behind and provides a weird CC shape that doesn't abut any road whatsoever, and you can't even do a right. CC use on. So the only logical thing at minimum to do would the Menchik and Ramsey Realty Corp to extend the CC forward to the actual road frontage so you have a contiguous lot. Now, does the church need to be in there? No. Does Campy Paving Corp need to be in there? No. So those are things that you could say, let's cut that out just to reduce the scope of it. But the, the ones that are surrounded by this L are there because yeah. it just wouldn't make Correct. much sense to have a CC well, that, wrapped around the Right, but that's what I'm getting at in terms yeah. of the church, although, again, ironically, the church would be... Would actually be a fitting be use, zoned. but you could subdivide the property under the CC. that takes out two acres. It takes out two point... If you take the church and the, and the other thing out, it takes out almost four acres, you know, two, three point six acres. And if you right? were, if you recall at the last meeting, we were requested to put in 20 and 21. I'm sorry, at the not the last meeting. At two, the workshop, ago, we were yeah. told to put in 20 and 21. Uh, yep. Right. But the I county came out. back. But the this is based on okay, the feedback the from the county. came back and mm -hmm. said that this plan is not a good plan for, for it. So if you want to keep going, rather than, har you know, harping on, uh, you know, making complaints about it, Maybe I'm you go back. Maybe you go I'm back just, and and look at maybe taking out. I haven't looked 18 at the county 19 improving a plan in a while. The, the, we don't have any control over what the planning board says in the town, nor what the county planning board says. And as Dennis said so eloquently, we don't care quite as much about the county says what ours says, and they both say the same thing in this case. We didn't know what they would say until after we put the petition in. So this, these suggested changes were prior to that petition being circulated. So. Given that feedback and given that most of the concerns by our planning board are on the scale of it, and then we have a backstop of if the concerns will become spot zoning if you go too far in that direction to get down the scale, perhaps the solution is scale back to the Ramsey Realty property. You have your L. You have your properties touching it. It makes yeah. logical sense. Reduce the cost of a, of a traffic study. We're all open to it still. I, I, I feel how Dennis feels on it. I think it'd be fine. I, I think a, a commercial use there, especially because the overlay zone overlap, overrules the things that don't work on the 303, 303 property. The 303 overlay overrules anything in the zone that doesn't quite fit. So in terms of setbacks and stuff like that. They, so you have a CC on 303 right there. Um, and you have pre-existing non-conforming uses that frankly are ugly and not, not pleasant on a road like that. So encouraging develop in a good direction, that makes sense. But we have to find a way to split the, the, split the baby here where you're not too big, where it's causing problems of being too yeah, big, and you're not so small and disconnected that it's a spot zone that doesn't make any sense. So maybe that balance is getting rid of the church and the paving, and then you do your traffic study on that leftover portion so we can show we've addressed some of the concerns. I would rather see that. This way we yeah. don't have something that's going really well. We're, we're giving away it. too much of the area. And also the church, frankly, would be a buffer towards anyone wanting more extension because I doubt a church is going to come in for a, a, a commercial rezone mm. in the future, you know, so. Unless they sell. If it's a church, mm. I guess, unless they sell. But well, it doesn't affect the uses there. It's already, it would be a per permitted use then if it was a church. Churches are not actually an authorized use in the LO, right? It's pre-existing, or is it? Correct. Well, that's right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Ironically, that would make them make it. So maybe incorrect. it's you know we take we we keep it as a as a pre-existing non-conforming use that way it stops being a church after a year it'll no longer be able to be a church after a year, and we keep the CC above it, right? Right. And frankly, at 2.2 .2 acres, it's more likely to get a to get a, uh, a use that's consistent with LO, because it's, yeah, because it's a bigger it's parcel bigger size, parcel. right? So an LO use might come in and buy it and make it not a church, which would be great, but, but again, CC is more likely to stay a church. I mean, since Jane's here, I mean, do you want to comment on maybe cutting it down, what your take is on that? Yeah. Um, again, oh. I think based on the comprehensive plan, it clearly states that the existing office and industrial zoning should be retained for large segments of the corridor with text changes resulting in reductions in the maximum amount of development per lot. The reductions would limit future traffic generation and would allow for additional open space treatment. They're recommending changes that include reducing the FAR rather than having it at 50% um, right now, reducing it to 40%. Um, again, density reductions within the CC commercial zoning that currently exists along Route 303 should be modified even more significantly 
than the proposed office and industrial zoning, thereby implementing the sustainable development study policy to limit stripped, strip commercial use along this roadway. In the Erie Street portion of the corridor, the existing land area, the north section we were just referencing, that is currently zoned CC should be reduced in size and its FAR should be reduced from 30% to the more typical 20% for highway commercial. So they're actually saying already there's a problem. When was that all passed again? 2002. All right, so my problem with the whole comprehensive plan, frankly, is that it went through an entire administration for basically a decade of not changing it and updating it. It went through another administration for six more years after that of not changing it and updating it. And now we're on the year 17 with no updates yeah. when it should have been done every 10 years. There was a study you know, done and, and never a recommendation made and it was never adopted. Never adopted. So, you know, and then there's all of the things you're listing, Jane, and it's frustrating because things like changes to FAR and changes to the mm -hmm. content of a zone, maybe if, you know, prior supervisor put forth a change to, in, in the many years that they had, to put, uh, you know, a different use in the LO that would actually be working right now. The problem is that mm -hmm. the LO can't, and, we're, and I'm hearing this from all over the town, from people that are in L, LO, LO, in, right. LO zone, they can't get occupancy, they can't build, they can't do anything. It's not just this applicant, it's other ones who are saying, can you amend the zone to put other uses in because there's no market for this anymore. It's not a market that the, the office space our market is shot. Right. And we're dealing with uh, outdated things. Frankly, are, you know, the, the, the 303, 303 overlay zone still is in effect if we change the zone, the, the setbacks and everything and all the rules right. about green space and everything like that. No one's out there requiring more open space, and no one, no one reduced the FAR in the last 17 years. But the zoning board has been known to grant those variances. No grant variances, especially on a pre-existing lot, because they need to in order to make it right. work. You know, we just had the bank where they made it better, but they didn't quite meet the standards, so they had granted the granted the variance on there. You know, right. and I get that. They, but it's still there and in effect, and they have to go to the ZBI. I mean, um, I, I agree with, and we've talked about this with the LO. It would that particular zone has to be looked at. Yeah, it's a disaster. Because just times have changed. What that zone was meant for was, you know, industrial type development. Obviously, we don't have as much of that anymore. However, I, again, looking at if all these smaller lots are changed to the less restrictive zone, maybe Mr. Bieber has no intent on buying all seven lots and developing them, but there's nothing prohibiting somebody in the future from doing that, coming in and taking, buying up four lots, joining them all together and putting in a huge strip mall if they wanted to, or putting in large fast food because it is permitted. So those are things that I tried to outline that just need to be weighed as to what could happen ultimately in the future as well. So maybe the reduction of that area is a solution, but those are the items that the board really needs to consider. It's not just for the one requester, it's right. for yeah, the future. We have future. to think about the whole right. future and everything, absolutely. It's not, it, the and plan maybe, is good, but it doesn't. it's not the only plan that could happen on the property, obviously. And, and maybe it's even better just to look at the LO and see if there's something we can add in to the LO zoning that will help some of these property owners that, you know, the industrial off the laboratory office space is not being, you know, rented out as readily as it, it was in the past. Right. Okay, thank you, Jan. So, I, obviously you're gonna need four anyway. There are four people who can vote on this. Paul can't, um, he happens to not be here, but he would have recused himself. Um, there is a middle ground on the size of it. I think we talked about that. The feedback we got from our planning board is that it's big and needs a big study about it. And also the considerations for the fact that it'll allow for other future development that's more. So. Again, unless anything's changed in the last five minutes, I think we're all still open to it, and we'd like to, we just can't go forward without seeing what the impact is, given the feedback and the comments we got from these, these bodies. So if you wanna make those changes about cutting, bringing it back up to where the end of the L is, to the Ramsey Realty Court, and then move forward with a traffic study on that, that addresses some of the concerns that were raised, and it makes it more likely that it'll get through because you've addressed probably three or four concerns right there out of the dozen or so that were raised. 
we can't promise it'll be in favor, but we're not saying that we're all saying no right now. We, you, think you can tell we're all want something like this to potentially work. Okay. We can't do it without a traffic study, though. All right, so I just request that the public hearing remain open and we'll move sure. forward. So we'll continue the public hearing then. Um, looking at the calendar. Uh, how long, Frank, do you, how long do you think a traffic study would take on this reduced scale? I, I, I can't even guess. Couldn't so even, so let, you want to put it a little further out then? Excuse me? You want to put it a little further out than like August, obviously. Or I don't think that that's going to happen by August. All right, so like late September maybe? Yeah. All right. That, so that's that's optimistic. So we'll Too put for overly optimistic for August. So September. yeah, yeah. Let's figure on is a there is a September seventeenth meeting. You want to try for that one, or you want to try for October first? We'll try for September seventeenth. If not, we'll let you know. Okay. So we'll say we we'll continue the seventeenth, and, and just continue with that. We'll continue night with that night if there's nothing to do. Come in and give us progress report. Yeah, there's enough space between the two meetings to re-notice it. It's two weeks anyway. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to continue the public hearing to September 17th at 8.05 p.m.? Second from Councilman Batari. All in favor? Aye. That was a motion for Councilman Troy. Sorry. Night, Thank night. you. Okay. I think that was our last voting thing other than adjournment, if I recall correctly. So um, do we have anything else for executive session that we didn't touch on in those five I minutes or so? No. I actually have a couple things oh, okay. uh, related to contracts. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move that we enter executive session and immediately thereafter adjourn in memory of Joseph uh, Mendele, uh, former retired employee of a parks department, also a U.S. Navy veteran and Vietnam War veteran. And also uh, John Moran. O-R-A-N. He's the father-in-law of uh, Mike Gorham, who works in the pro shop at the golf course. Okay. John Moran, of uh, father-in-law for Mike Gorham. Yes, he's a uh, long-time, uh, very active member of the St. Margaret's Parish, also uh, active with the uh, Cultural Center, Irish Cultural Center, too. Okay. Anyone else, Jerry? No. Thank goodness. Was there any good anyone here? All right, adding that name of uh, John Moran, and uh, we will then, therefore, that's my motion to move into executive session and thereafter adjourn. Is there a second? Councilman Troy, all in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Have a